Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Parks again. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys um, my build like build guides for 3.3 incursion. Although it's not really much of a build guide, it's pretty much just going to be telling you guys what I'm going to be playing. So I have not 100% finalized, excuse me, on a skill. Um, there's kind of two between I'm going to be playing towards and I'm probably going to be trying out a couple others. So it's either going to be Fire Trap with, well, all of this is going to be crit. So crit Fire Trap with crit Flame Surge crap, <coughs> Trap as single target, or um, crit Ice Nova with crit Freeze Pulse as single target. All trappers. I'm leaning towards the Ice Nova and Freeze Pulse trapper. Now, I have two trees for you guys, if you're curious. I have a CI variant and I have a life variant that can pretty much be plugged in with any type of skill that you want. Um, I was honestly trying to find a more like optimized setup for me, but there just really wasn't, um, for at least from what I can tell. The life-based trapper has extreme issues with pathing in terms of like, you can't sacrifice like anything in terms of their life value. Uh, the CI trapper is a lot more flexible, which is really weird, but it's a lot more flexible with where it can go. You can see here, like I've spec straight down three points to pick up uh, Master Sapper, whereas the other one is like starved for life as much as you can get. So to explain, um, to explain <clears throat> the ascendancy choice, uh, because even though I'm playing life or ES, I would still play an assassin. Um, but before I explain that, I want to explain that there's three ways you can play trapper builds. So, number one, the first way to play a trapper build is by using a sunblast with two cheap constructions. What this means is that when you throw your traps, they're essentially going to detonate around the time that they land. So you throw them and they go boom, they're like grenades. That's one way. The second way is by utilizing the ascendancy uh, Septor and using chain reaction, which means when your traps trigger, your nearby traps also trigger. Both of these ways of playing a trapper though have one common issue, and that's if you have a trap that's triggered by itself or not by an enemy or it just goes off based off you know expiring, it does not actually target anything. So if it's an AoE like Ice Nova, that's okay, it just goes in an AoE. But if you're using a targeted skill like Freeze Pulse, it's not gonna directly target the monster. So now they added a new stat, or it's not really new, but they added an abundance of it, which is called Trap Trigger Area of Effect. You can tell because there's new Trap Trigger nodes here. There's a gigantic Trap Trigger node here. You get an additional 20% Trap Trigger here. And you also pick up Master Sapper down here. I think together with this, uh, plus maybe this one, no, not this one. These these here, I believe, is about 170 trap trigger AoE. That means that if you use one cheap construction jewel, you're pretty much hitting like you, every single time you throw you throw your traps. Like even if the target is like not close to it, like say the target is walking here and your trap is over here, it's still gonna trigger. Uh, and the way cluster trap works, if you guys aren't familiar, is you throw cluster trap, which you know kind of randomly places your traps around the area where you aimed but they can only be a certain distance from that spot and if you hit the trap trigger like basically i think it's like 18 units or i don't know exactly what it is you are guaranteed that pretty much every single trap goes off the reason why that's good is because when you're rolling a chance at charges like frenzy charges or power charges with the nodes you get every single one it's not like chain reaction where only one goes off if you use a tinker skin you get all of the ES and life back. You don't just get one application of it. Um, and I'm really excited to try this type of trapper specifically. So the reason why I picked um, Sahab for this is because you get Explosive Expert, which is area of effect, which is great for Ice Nova, which is also great for Blasphemies. Uh, we, will, we will be running a Blasphemy Temporal Chains on both variants of the build. Um, you get 20 AOE damage, penetration, and reduced damage taken from traps and mines. Um, that's pretty good, assuming that works with Labyrinth because it says mine hits at the end. I don't know if that means trap hits too, but if this works against the degen, that's pretty cool. Uh, Pyromaniac, which is probably going to be our first point, gives us immunity to ignite and immunity to shock. Really crazy strong. You also get life regen per second. Since we are going to be using Cluster Trap with our Ice Nova and or any of our main spam skill, we're going to be getting a shit ton of life per second back from this. Uh, paired with Siphoning Trap, this should be very, very nice. Then we get Born into the Shadows, which reduces everything's damage because it's going to be blinded. It also blinds everything, 
Uh, blind is very, very strong because it basically gives us the evasion that we don't have because we're not scaling evasion on our CI build. And on our life build, it scales even better with grace, so that's fucking awesome. And then for Uber Lab, we're probably going to grab Perfect Crime, which is just going to give us a nice damage increase along with our chance for uh, our traps to trigger an additional time. So, <clears throat> with the actual progression of the character, one thing to note is that the CI build is going to be reliant on a specific flask, and that flask is called Sorrow of the Divine. Sorrow, Sorrow of the Divine essentially gives you Zealot's Oath and on a Sulfur Flask, which means it gives you um, Consecrated Ground, which also gives you like 40% increased damage. So if you don't like that, you can literally just move across and spec a Zealot's Oath and get like the Arcane Potency, and you can grab like Overcharge and Faith and Steel. You can essentially literally just drop this bottom section to grab Zealot's Oath if you don't feel comfortable playing on a Flask 100% of the time. This build does grab Alchemist, so it is going to be based around Flasks, and since we already cover two of our immunities via Pyromaniac, I think it's going to be really solid as a CI build. Now, as a life-based build, what we gain access to is we're going to be able to pick up Acrobatics with Phase Acrobatics, along with the blind we already have from Born to the Shadows. We do also still get the life regen here. Uh, furthermore, we're going to be going Eldritch Battery and Mind Over Matter. And the reason for Eldritch Battery and Mind Over Matter is because we can reserve 100% of our mana. And we can just have a little bit of energy shield pool to actually cast from. This also works really well with things like Eldritch Battery, or sorry, Acrobatics. Because even though we do get the energy shield penalty, we're not really using our energy shield for that crazy of sustain. That's why I still don't even know if I'm going to go Mind Over Matter. It really depends on how easy it is to scale ES with that penalty. But as a life-based character, we'll be, running, we'll be running Blasphemy Temporal Chains along with Grace and a uh, Grace with a uh, Empower. The reason why is that scales up the Grace, which increases the flat amount of evasion, which is pretty big. Uh, of course, if you don't want to use this, you could try something else, but you're trying to reserve as much mana as possible since it's literally useless to your character. For the CI variant, I opted out and went with a Blasphemy, so same as the other one, but we also grabbed Discipline and just a Clarity. The reason why is we're going to need a certain amount of mana to be able to still actually continuously spam traps. Now, as for the, um, the Energy Shield variant, we do pick up some Mana Nodes, so we pick up Deep Thoughts over here, and we also pick up uh, Dreamer. So it's going to be important to scale some uh, percent max mana regen on our gear as well for that. So that's pretty much about it. I just want to explain to you guys the progression. Now, if you're playing a CI build, uh, you're kind of going to have to understand how CI builds work. Uh, otherwise, I just recommend playing my life build. And you can always just respec into the, into the um, CI build. So we're just going to start off, grab your trap damage, uh, continue, move across come through here. Now, you can uh, totally drop the crit if you don't want to level as crit, but I think most of the skills I stated have a 6% base crit chance. It's your choice on trap damage or throwing speed. Uh, obviously, if you get this early game, you're going to need more mana. This is just more damage. Uh, cold Hearted Calculation. I came down. Uh, I'll grab the life. Probably come up here. I won't touch jewels early game until I get good jewels. Uh, grab this entire cluster come down towards here. I'll probably stop right here and grab like Acrobatics and Master Sapper, and I'll just cut it right here. And then we'll navigate up, obviously grab your Expedition Munitions, uh, grab your Life Nodes, come up, grab your Blast Cascade and Throat Seeker, keep going. Actually, Throat Seeker you can probably grab later too. Keep going and you're just gonna fill in the tree. It's pretty straightforward here. You grab Eldritch Battery when you have Tinker Skin, uh, assuming you're going to use Tinker Skin for this build. Uh, this build specifically is based off of a Tinker Skin. Now, I don't know how expensive Tinker Skin is going to be, and that's why I opted out in making the CI Trapper as well for you guys, which does not have any requirements. Uh, you'd probably go off with an Incandescent Heart, because Incandescent Heart gives you really good elemental mitigation. Uh, and since you already have Blind for Physical, now this helps you with Elemental, and I think that's really good. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. Just to give you guys a rundown again, uh, it's either going to be Fire Trap with Flame Surge Trap, uh, or Ice Nova with, um, Ice Nova with, uh, what is it called? What is it called? Freeze Pulse Single Target. I may even try Arc, but I'm pretty sure Arc is going to be hella played, so I probably won't play Arc. But you can honestly, you guys can play anything you'd like with these tree layouts. 
um, you know, if you want to squeeze out more damage and go lightning, you're right here. By, uh, via fire here, ice, you can go right here. Uh, there's even some nodes like you can get in between, like snow forged, etc. So that's pretty much about it for me. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I can't wait to see you guys in the Incursion League. I'm going to be very excited um, since I'm kind of going into this blind, so I can't wait. Anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves, and I'll see you boys all in Incursion. Take care, everybody.